Yo, what's up guys? Mike Wazowski here. $13 haircut, not my best way to start out 2020, but Apple has some pretty big plans already. New information on the iPhone 12, the redesign guys could be even more impactful than we thought. The iPhone SE 2 coming out as early as March of this year could actually be launching in two different sizes. So like a normal one and a plus size model. Apple's working on a gaming Mac potentially. And inside of one of Apple's databases, they've leaked a product red version of the Apple Watch Series 5 coming pretty soon. So I wanna share with you all of the new info, get you caught up to date, drop a like if you're excited, and of course hit subscribe so you stay up to date on the latest Apple news. Let's go ahead and jump in. First up, before diving into anything else, I wanted to add this to the very beginning. In case any of you are looking to order AirPods 2 or AirPods Pro, there are some fresh engraving options that normally I wouldn't cover, but this time they're exceptionally cool. So you've always been able to put text on here. I've personally recommended against it just because I do believe it substantially will drop the resale value. Now you guys can put an updated version of text on there or emoji, and if Apple left out the fun ones like peach and eggplant emoji are not on here, which I think is a travesty. But you've got some general emojis like smiley face or sort of like flirty dude with the tongue out. And then of course your an emojis and then you have snake. I mean, there's some fun stuff on here, but I mean, Apple, I feel like they kind of missed the boat. Like who would not want to give their significant other, like, I don't know, the peach or the, you know, eggplant emoji. Like that'd be really funny. So anyway, check these out. It doesn't cost any extra money and the emojis actually are kind of cool. So they can make your AirPods look a little bit different coming straight out of the Apple factory. So I wanna start with the iPhone 12, which is still a very long time away, around nine months until we're actually gonna be getting our hands on this device. We still don't know the official design, but we may have gotten one step closer courtesy to a new source. Now, according to China Times, I mean, this is just a story for the ages. Apparently they're at a conference, I believe over in China, and they were talking to a bank there. And the bank said that component manufacturers told them that they were ordering parts and developing parts for a notchless iPhone that doesn't have face ID and only has touch ID for authentication. Now that sounds pretty wild. Both Bloomberg and Minchiko have said that both touch ID and face ID would be present. And both of them have said it could easily slip to 2021 for the release date. This is the first time we're hearing lately that this would even be on track for 2020, claiming that an in-screen selfie camera, because there wouldn't be a notch, would be present and we'd have touch ID. And this would only be available on the highest end iPhone. So I don't know if that means like highest end iPhone as in an iPhone 12 Pro series, the 6.1 and 6.7 inch models, or just that highest end 6.7 inch iPhone, which would mean the screen to body ratio would be out of this world. Listen, so I want this rumor to be true just as much as you do, but I am still so skeptical that Apple could make a tech jump that quick, going from a huge notch to no notch at all. I mean, that, that seems a bit ridiculous, right? And then on top of that, getting rid of Face ID and putting a camera under the display or like in the display. I mean, this sounds like stuff that we're gonna be seeing in five or 10 years, but probably not at the start of this decade. Even so, I think this is awesome that if in 2021, we would see an iPhone with no notch, that's still really great news. It means we'll probably see a smaller notch this year. The question basically remains, will it be this model that looks something like this or this model that looks something like this? Um, and we haven't seen any official images of this iPhone yet. Like no insanely good leaker like on leaks have said, hey, this is the official design. I have it from industry sources. So we're still kind of waiting and dream. I want to hear your thoughts about this down below. Now that we've heard like the same thing four times, do you think it is actually happening in 2020 or do you think we're going to get a more reserved design like this? Honestly, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm happy with either of these, but the ultimate goal is definitely to get rid of the notch entirely. And if Apple pulls that off this year, it's going to be pretty impressive. We've seen a lot of evidence that Apple is basically tweaking every part of this phone from the new stainless steel frame to the new iPhone 4 aesthetic, uh, changes to stabilization in the camera lenses that'll be like for the entire sensor rather than individual lenses. As you know, the display sizes are totally getting mixed and matched. We're going from 5.4 all the way up to 6.7 inches and then two 6.1 inch models in the middle. Well, the screen technology, in addition to probably being 120 hertz, which is gonna be buttery smooth, so nice. Uh, I'm just so excited for that upgrade. According to Korean website, The Elec, which has actually provided a couple of really interesting details about the iPhone 12, they say that Apple has developed a new screen process for the iPhone 12, eliminating a layer and allowing some components to basically be plastered directly on on the OLED portion of the screen, which is cool, meaning it could be potentially thinner, and MacRumors notes it could make the screen more power efficient as well. Now, this is also gonna reduce costs as well doing this process, and we have heard, so this does line up with previous reports, that Apple is looking to cut cost supply chain side, making some things cheaper there so that they don't have to raise the price for us substantially, although a 50 to $100 price increase on the iPhone 12 Pro series is pretty much expected now. For the iPhone 12's processor, we know it's probably 
going to be called the A14, and TSMC is said to be the manufacturer this year, but instead of using the seven nanometer process that they used on the 2019 iPhone 11 series, they're going all the way down to five nanometers. So the chips are going to be even tinier, and I hope that translates to more power efficiency and obviously better performance. Like that's expected for sure. This is actually really good news for battery life because with a more efficient processor that's a little bit smaller, you've got a more efficient screen potentially, and the battery management module on the iPhone 12 is said to get 48% smaller. That's looking really good for battery life. And the battery life on the iPhone 12 series is already out of this world. I'll be honest, I forgot my charger this last weekend and I was like just bumming off people like three, four percent at a time for like three days over New Year's. And it was kind of embarrassing. So I could use like an extra little bit, but I probably should have just bought the battery case, right? So in total, we're expecting four iPhone 12 models, but a fresh report courtesy of Digitime suggests that Apple could actually be working on it two additional models. Now we already knew about one, the iPhone SE 2 potentially being called the iPhone 9 with a 4.7 inch LCD screen starting around 400 bucks, 813 processor, three gigabytes of RAM. It's got the whole package, but really cheap and in a smaller form factor. Think of it essentially as a cheap iPhone 8, but with really good internals and a solid camera upgrade. And uh, now we're hearing from Digitime is that Apple could actually be planning a plus model for release as early as 2020 as well. The iPhone SE 2 slash the iPhone 9, still totally unsure of the name, is essentially an upgraded iPhone 8 model. So there is an iPhone 8 Plus that exists. Maybe Apple wants to hit that market for like $499 and then also have the other higher end iPhone 12 series for like the $700 range, $800, $900 range, uh, obviously upwards of $1,000. But they could really dominate like the $400 to $1,200 cell phone market with all of these offerings. My only fear is that this is going to be way too confusing for anybody that's not extremely into tech. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this pans out because uh, six phones seems a bit excessive. I mean, can you fathom going to Apple? Apple.com and having six different 2020 iPhones to choose from, that's a hard choice. Much longer though than Apple has been struggling to sell smartphones in some segments of the market, Apple has been struggling to sell Macs to people that play games on their computers. Like you can do light gaming, Minecraft, League of Legends, some fun stuff like that, but any FPSs, AAA titles, nobody's looking at a Mac to seriously play games. And that's just a fact. Macs are not known to be good gaming computers and Apple has essentially ignored that portion of the population since since they've been making Macs. They have never marketed pretty much ever as a computer to play games on. It's always for productivity or for work or for school, but never for gaming. Economic Daily News believes that that will be changing as early as June of this year. So Apple has said at the Worldwide Developers Conference in June 2020, probably in the very early portion of the month, to be revealing a gaming-centric Mac marketed and made for people to play games. How that's going to look, I have no idea. Um, I, I mean, is it going to be a new design? Will it be the Apple gaming computer? Will it just be an upgrade to the iMac? We really don't know just yet because there are very limited details about this computer except for like the price Which they reference around five thousand dollars now to be fair to the source They did say up to five thousand dollars But the fact that that is our first known reference and the fact that Apple already doesn't have good street cred with the gaming community Makes me kind of concerned about what they're going for here All of my friends that have built PCs have made these incredible Windows machines for less than three thousand dollars and three thousand dollars is on the high end and including a case, including a monitor, including the CPU and GPU, I don't know how Apple could possibly expect to charge $5,000 and just release a mediocre Mac that's okay at playing games. So obviously to make any fair judgment to this, we need some more information, but uh, I don't know, like hearing that first price, if this Mac will even exist, is uh, it's not a good look. So while there's pretty much no evidence for that, Apple themselves has apparently confirmed this one. Watch Generation says that very briefly in an Apple database, there showed evidence for a product red Apple Watch series. Series 5 that could actually be launching as early as spring. Apple has been known routinely to, at the very minimum, update Apple Watch bands and iPhone cases every spring with new colors. I, I guess this actually works as a way to make people go out and buy a new case because it's springtime or the seasons have changed. Personally, I've never fallen into that trap. I just spend money on a bunch of other dumb things like AirPods. But they actually went ahead and mocked up what this could look like with sort of like a, a rose red. Apple generally goes with something more dramatic, like a Ferrari in your face red. But honestly, this looks looks pretty nice. Apple has never sold a product red Apple Watch before. They've always sold a product red band uh, as long as I can remember. I, I actually own one for my watch. But this would be a change up of what Apple has done in previous years, which is release a product red iPhone. So if you're looking to buy an Apple Watch and you really want red, uh, probably wait just a couple of months. It will probably be released around the mid to late March or early April timeframe. But I question if people are even going to end up buying this one just 
because a phone you put in your pocket, you like the color because it's red, but having this always on your wrist, red is a very specific, very dominant color. Red's gonna conflict with a lot, but if you love red that much, you probably deserve to be wearing it on your wrist anyway. And that is gonna wrap up this video. Drop a like if you're excited for the iPhone 12, new iPhone SE 2 sizes, a new gaming Mac, and of course a product red Apple Watch. And of course hit subscribe if you learned something new or you wanna find out more about Apple products in the future. I've been Sam, I hope you're doing well, and uh, Mike Wazowski, we'll see you guys in the next video.